we're going to demonstrate this actually working. So we're using our ass table circuit, we repaired it, what happened is it blown at least one transistor, so I replaced a few and then retested them. And we've added uh, forced cooling to keep this in check. And the meter at the moment is showing 30 odd degrees. And it's just simply so we can get a workable system. And it seems to perform very well. I'm pretty confident with this now. I actually put... Okay, so it's about sort of 50, 60 hertz. As you can see, it's not moving. This does not read out correctly because there's, you know, lots of EMF noise. But you can see what happens. Okay, so if I, I can just turn this. There we go. And you'll see... Go. And we've got control, don't we? Okay. You can hear it, there's a little bit of funniness going on there, I don't know what that is. But we have pretty much infinite control. Right, and then I'll just take it off, and you can see we've got 42 degrees. Okay, now it's highest when it's on full power. So if I just take it up to full power, right, and just leave it running, <coughs> okay, while well, it's doing that, let's check it out from the back end. You see, that's what's happening. Yeah. I don't know what the battery voltage is like, let's have a check it out. So we don't have any volts. And stop. Crikey. Caught me. And you can see that it's actually on 40 odd degrees. Okay, I think we're losing the battery a bit because it was on 27 originally, and now it's on 24 volts, and it goes down to 21. That's across both batteries. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's good. And uh, we have got bi-directional still, because I've still got the original um, loop. So, oh, crikey. We just unwire it. So we can do it in both directions. Sorry about this, I know I'm pointing the camera everywhere. See? So we can go the other way. The meat is complaining because it's getting all sorts of nasty EMFs. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do, it, uh, do it like this, maybe. So I turn it down, and you can see. Oops. Now the reason why it kind of jumps a bit is because it still is a series one motor. So whilst uh, whilst we've got control of the power it's still going to try and talk it up from naught you see oh, can't hold three things at once, let's try and turn it down see? <coughs> so you can see we can control this, I can take it easy see if I stop it and you can see look it's just turning Yeah, 40 degrees it's been holding and it only seems to be a problem when I take it up to full speed. Let me just, I'll hold it in this hand. I don't know how I'm going to work this, but here we go. Yeah. So I've got that. So I'll let me try and hold that there. And then we turn it up. Okay. I think it's making some battery hot. It smells something. It smells like battery though. I think it's discharging that battery. Yeah, it's on 23 volts. Okay. And still on 40 ish volts. If I take the other way, right, this is the other way. Let me just try and get my hand around this, and the mic might sound a bit funny. So, well, you see, it comes down quickly, obviously, the heat sink's working. There we go. Right. 
and again. See? It's under control. Turn the speed up. Uh, we are losing the battery. It's discharging because that was going a lot faster before. And it's barely even hitting the 40s now. But that's okay. So that's good enough now to add in <coughs> another battery. And look, see, that's 30 degrees. I think the breakdown temperature of this is, I think it's in the region of um, about 100 degrees, 125 degrees. And obviously we're nowhere near that. But that may change when we actually put this vehicle on the road, because then there's going to be a lot more load and a lot more torque. But you can see, obviously, we have proportional control done with an ass tape, right? And what I really should do now is transfer this circuit here, right, which is the um, the full circuit, onto this board, and then we can get rid of all of this lot and just have the A-stable board running it. And then that would be much easier. And uh, we need some more batteries by the looks, because <laughs> I've run out, and that one's discharged now. So it's working. It is good. I don't know what the PWM wave is, but it seems to be good enough. I wouldn't be surprised because last time when I was trying to set this up, I got high um, temperatures, didn't I? Um, if I ran it at high frequency. And low, I could only get it controlled at low temperatures, but the reason why was because I was using a slow switching speed, one millisecond, roughly. Now we're on a microsecond, and it's switching quickly. We're getting good temperatures. I could probably improve it more because the A-stable is, I don't know, but I think it's in the region of two microseconds. So if we can get that down to one, then that means the transition time is meant quicker and we half the amount of power going through the, uh, the IGBT, which means it'll stay cooler. But it's working. This is good. And those are in parallel. What I've done is I've actually ordered some more of these right but not the 75 amp versions the 100 amp versions right and we'll give it a go and see if it works with one and if that does work <coughs> then at least uh, we're on the right way but that's that's pretty robust it's not showing any signs of failure it's just temperatures rising a bit but that's to be expected i was hoping it would be lower but it isn't and to be honest those in there the igbt's in there are liquid cooled so they need cooling too. It's not like it's, oh, well, it needs cooling. No, no, they all need cooling because they're dissipating power. So, uh, yeah, it should be quite interesting. And if we get 100 amp versions of these, I'm pretty confident in actual fact that we'll be able to get a Prius motor working off it, off the set. And those are, um, I think, about £30 each, something like £26 each for a dual. And we need three of them. So that's, yeah, £75. So this is working out now. We can actually make a controller which will control the motor and it isn't expensive. So this is looking good now. I mean that's not a high power motor, it's only an 8 kilowatt motor. But the thing is, is it's series wound so it's giving nice hellishly big currents which this is having to cope with. I'll probably work out what we're going to do with that later.